Yo, what's good everyone? Hope y'all are having a great weekend so far. Today I'm going to be breaking down some of my favorite tournament or GPP plays for this week 6 NFL DraftKings main slate. Like I always do, I'm going to go through a couple of my favorite game stacks, some of my favorite individual plays in stacks, and then wrap up the video with another low priced option or sub 4k wide receiver play. With that being said, let's dive into my spreadsheet here. And like we always do, we're going to kick things off here in the top left hand corner with those highest implied game totals. Again, talked about this in my cash video yesterday if you want to go check that out. Two of these games coming in with an implied total above 50 points, and we got four games that follow that all at 45 and a half points. Definitely some shootout potential on this 11 game slate, and these two games at the top will definitely be popular. And then I got the highest implied team totals listed behind me there. You can always use that as a reference point as I'm going through some of my favorite plays here. With that being said, let's dive into a couple of game stacks that I like here for this week. And I want to start by saying this. Bills, Chiefs, Cardinals, Seahawks going to be the two most popular games to target. Plus, those are two of the afternoon games as well. People love targeting those. Late afternoon games gives them a little extra to wait for on these DFS slates. And it just kind of keeps things interesting throughout the day. I don't mind getting away from that. Now, I do want some exposure to both of those games for sure, one way or another. Maybe it's one or two players from each of those games. But I also kind of like some of these early slate games as well. One that stuck out to me was this game between the Buccaneers and the Steelers. I like rolling out Tom Brady with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and then running it back with a really cheap George Pickens. So this Buccaneers offense should be able to kind of throw the ball wherever they want against this Steelers defense. You you can see there they have allowed 23.6 DraftKings points per game to opposing quarterbacks. That's the sixth most in the NFL so far this year. And wide receivers have shredded this secondary all year long, allowing damn near 52 DraftKings points per game to opposing wide receivers. That's the most in the NFL. Now, George Pickens here has been just amazing over the last few weeks. Some of the catches that he's making is just ridiculous. And again, very affordable here at $4,600 for a guy that's seen eight targets in each of his last two games. Kenny Pickett is not afraid to throw the ball his way and allows him to go up and try and make some big plays. That's all you're looking for, especially at this price tag here. And the Steelers are likely playing from behind in this game, having to throw the ball quite a bit. And let's say you want to run with that theory, right? Buccaneers get out to an early lead, run the ball a little bit in the second half. Don't be afraid to pivot off of Mike Evans or Chris Godwin to Leonard Fournette. He gets very involved in the passing game, so no matter what the game script is, he will be involved. But should the Bucs get out to an early lead in this game, run the ball a little bit more in the second half, Lenny could be a good stacking option as well. Plus, I'm looking at the highest implied team totals here. Now, Buccaneers are projected to damn near score four touchdowns in this game. If Brady can throw for three, maybe Lenny runs for one. You're sitting pretty nice with this Bucks offense. And again, have a good run back option there in George Pickens at that cheap price tag. Another game stack I like here is going to be that Chiefs and Bills game. And honestly, I, I almost thought about highlighting a different game you know that Minnesota Miami game looks really interesting but being that they're rolling out their third string quarterback the Dolphins I kind of got off of that a little bit but I still have some intrigue in that game as a whole when you got a guy like Tyreek Hill he can score from anywhere on the field so maybe you could roll out someone like Cousins with Jefferson Thielen or Irv Smith Hell, you could even mix in Delvin Cook and run it back with someone like Tyreek Hill or Raheem Mostert, who looks to have taken over as the number one running back in that Dolphins offense. So yeah, that's kind of an alternative game stack that I like as well. But let's talk about this game here between the Bills and the Chiefs. Highest implied game total on this main slate. It will be very popular to target this game in general. I kind of talk about this in the notes here. Why I went with Mahomes stacked up with Travis Kelsey, running it back with Devin Singletary. Very easy stack. I'm keeping it simple here. Now I can mix in a Steph Diggs, Gabe Davis, Isaiah McKenzie is going to be back here this week. You could even mix in one of those wide receivers for the Chiefs, but... 
I'm not super interested in that. We know a lot of the targets are going to go Kelsey's way, and he's got seven touchdowns on the season, so obviously gets looked for in the red zone. But you can see I put the ownership projections there in the notes. The reason I like this stack here is because, well, Mahomes is kind of flying under the radar here a little bit, only projected for 7% ownership. Kelsey's coming in around 9% ownership, and then Singletary there around 5%. So, yeah, I'm still getting exposure to this game that could very well turn into a massive shootout, but I'm keeping it a little simple here and going with the plays that are projected to have lower ownership, but still have really nice upside. Now, before we dive into some of my favorite individual plays here in Stacks, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. We're already five weeks into the NFL season, week six is on the horizon, but in my opinion, we're still getting started here, and I got a lot of football content to come your way this year. Now, diving into some of my favorite individual plays in stacks here, Lamar Jackson at $8,100 with so much focus on that game between the Cardinals in Seattle and the Bills and Chiefs. Lamar Jackson is flying under the radar this week, and he probably shouldn't be in this matchup here against the New York Giants. We know that Lamar Jackson is a slate breaker, or at least he can be. We've seen that twice already this year, 40-plus DraftKings points in those games. And you can see there in the notes, Giants defense, not very good. Ranked 24th overall in pass DVOA and 21st overall in run DVOA. Uh, Lamar Jackson loves to run the ball, we all know that. He could easily, well, I hate to use the word easily could go for 100 rushing yards in this game, but it's not crazy to think that he could do that and also throw for multiple touchdowns. Also projected at 7.3% ownership, I'll take advantage of that for a guy that has one of the best ceilings on this slate. Now moving over here to the running backs, and another guy that's flying under the radar here this week is Nick Chubb. Again, I don't think that should be the case. This is a good matchup here against the New England Patriots at home, who have allowed the second highest rushing success rate this year, and Nick Chubb has just been fantastic. Now, I've talked about this in the past. I think he's arguably the best pure running back in the NFL. The downside with him is he's not heavily involved in the passing game. However, he is averaging around 21 touches per game and a total of 126 yards per game and has no issue finding the end zone. So being that he's projected for around 7% ownership himself, I'm not afraid to go back to Nick Chubb here this weekend. Now, I'm not going to lie here. With this next play, I initially had Elvin Kamara in this spot at $6,700. We got word last night that Andy Dalton is going to be starting for the Saints this week. I absolutely love that for AK. But I also talked about him in my cash plays video yesterday, so I figured I'd mix it up here a little bit and go with Aaron Jones. Like the matchup at home for the Packers this week and playing against the New York Jets. And Jones seems like a regression touchdown candidate this week, has not scored since week two. And we all know this with Aaron Jones. When he scores touchdowns, it's not usually just one. He scores multiple. So I kind of like him getting in the end zone here this week and maybe multiple times against this Jets team. Plus, they just lost to the Giants last week. The Packers will be looking to rebound. And then I got Daryl Henderson Jr. there of the Los Angeles Rams, and I'm looking at the projected ownerships here for the weekend. He is gaining some steam, and rightfully so, right? We all got word yesterday that Cam Akers is likely out of L.A. for whatever reason. Obviously, he's not been very good this year or ever since he tore his Achilles, but him just getting booted off the team, uh, we probably didn't see that coming. But that allows Henderson to get back to RB1 in this offense. Should see anywhere from 12 to 15 plus touches in this game and a really nice price tag there at $5,100. And a solid matchup here against this Carolina Panthers defense that cannot create pressure and has allowed 27.6 DraftKings points per game to opposing running backs this year. That's the seventh most in the NFL. And being that Kenneth Walker's at $5,400, you know, Benjamin's $4,600. Those two are projected to be the two most popular running backs on this slate. Again, I talk about them in my cash plays video yesterday. So Henderson is still going to be popular this week, but less popular than those two and a big price saver here at 5100 And then we got the wide receivers there. First guy I got is Justin Jefferson of the Minnesota Vikings. I did 
did talk about him in my video yesterday as well, but love him in tournaments. Kind of broke down that game earlier when I was going through the game stacks. Kind of like that game in general. I'd like it a little bit more if Teddy Bridgewater was playing. I think they could probably keep that a little closer on the Miami side, but hey, you never know. Like I said, you got guys like Tyreek Hill that can break the slate himself and score a touchdown from anywhere on the field. Maybe this does turn into a shootout here, and it's definitely going to fly under the radar. Justin Jefferson leads the league right now with 547 receiving yards, and the Dolphins just happen to rank dead last in past DVOA, so he should have his way with those cornerbacks. Next, I got Hollywood Brown there of the Arizona Cardinals, and of this game that is projecting to be very popular between the Cards and Seattle, he's one guy that's kind of flying under the radar as well, and I didn't suspect that, especially considering his numbers here. Over the last few weeks, he's just been phenomenal and a volume monster. You can see I put that in the notes off to the right-hand side. Right now, he's second in routes run and targets, fourth in catches, and sixth in receiving yards across the NFL. Plus, this Seattle defense cannot stop anything, ranking 31st overall in past DVOA. I then got Christian Kirk there of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who played very well in his first three weeks with his new team, but now he's had back-to-back -back performances that have not been all that great, so I like going back to him here at this price of $5,800. Seems like a good bounce-back spot here against the Indianapolis Colts, who he played very well against back in Week 2, saw six targets in that game, had six receptions, seven receiving yards and scored two touchdowns ended up finishing with damn near 26 DraftKings points and the Colts have been very good against the run this year but not so much against the pass ranking 21st overall in past DVOA and then on the other side of that game Alec Pierce here while he's only still playing around 50 60 percent of the offensive snaps he is just steadily getting more involved in this offense and when he's on the field Matt Ryan is looking his way coming fresh off a game where he saw nine targets last week and made some really good contested catches. This is a 6-3 wide receiver here, so if Matt Ryan can get him some good balls or just throw it up to him for that matter, Alec Pierce should be able to come down with a few of them and a solid spot here at home. I love playing indoors, especially as we get later into the year. Same thing there obviously goes for Christian Kirk and a nice price tag at $4,300 for Pierce. And what do we need? I, I shoot for four 5x value in my tournament lineups. That would be 200, 250 DraftKings points. So if you're in that range, you're probably sitting really nice in your tournament lineups. You know, 4x value, that's what, 16, 17 DraftKings points for him. 5x is 20. 20 plus. Not crazy to think as long as he continues to get solid volume. We then got the tight ends here and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have made some lineups here this weekend that I have both Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews in the same lineup. There's a lot of people that are going, ah, well, Travis Kelsey is going to be super popular. Well, for starters, he's only around 9-10% ownership right now. I'd hesitate to say that that's super popular, but let's say he gets steam heading into Sunday. He's around 15-20%. Well, put Mark Andrews in the same lineup, that's not only one going to make your lineup a little more contrarian, but number two, you're getting the two best tight ends in football in the same lineup that have just as great a ceiling as most wide receivers. So I kind of like approaching it that way, and you can stack them up with Lamar Jackson as well in a good matchup against the Giants. Now, George Kittle's pricing is very interesting as well, and maybe you get off of Travis Kelsey. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to fade that game between the Chiefs and Bills. I understand the the risk that goes into it, but let's just hypothetically say that that game does end up being 20 to 17 final, right? Way lower scoring than what it's projected for. It, that happens in the NFL all the time. These are two very good teams that have the upside to make it a shootout, but they're also two very good teams that could battle it out all day long and end up having a lower scoring game. So let's say you paired together uh, Mark Andrews and George Kittle. Now, George Kittle has not had a boom game so far this year, but we know the upside that he has as well. And I like the matchup here against Atlanta, who struggled against tight ends this year, allowing 17.5 DraftKings points per game. And when's the last time we got George Kittle at a consistent low 5K price range? He's usually a guy that floats in the 6K range or has in previous years. 
So I kind of like that this week in this matchup. And then going back to that game between Minnesota and Miami here this week, and I kind of like Irv Smith as well. You could realistically do something like Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Irv Smith, and then run it back with a Raheem Mostert, Tyreek Hill, or Jalen Waddle. But being that Irv Smith is so cheap here, he definitely opens up some things throughout the rest of your lineup. And Miami has not been great against tight ends this year, allowing 15.1 DraftKings points per game, the seventh most in the NFL. And then we got the defenses here and honestly this is probably the grossest slate I've seen so far this year when it does come to defenses. I don't mind the Jags here going up against Matt Ryan who's not afraid to take sacks and has turned the ball over quite a bit this year and actually the last time these guys played back in week two the Jags had five sacks in that game and three interceptions so I don't mind them at this price tag here a $3,000 especially if Jonathan Taylor ends up sitting this week. And then the Atlanta Falcons there. The strategy I'm thinking of here is you got a West Coast team in the 49ers traveling across the country playing an early noon game. I don't have the stats in front of me, but we all know that that has notoriously not panned out well for West Coast teams. Yeah, they can still squeak out wins from time to time, but we've also seen some really gross games for teams like the Rams, the Chargers, and the Niners that have to travel all the way across the country and play at noon on Sunday. So the Falcons here, don't mind it at a cheaper price tag at $2,500, the second cheapest defense on this main slate. And as always, I'm going to wrap up this video here with a low priced option or sub 4K wide receiver play. And I talked about this in my cash plays video yesterday. There is so much value at multiple different positions this week that I do not feel the need to spend below $4,000 at the wide receiver position. You got guys like Rondale Moore at $4,200, Eno Benjamin at the running back position, $4,600, Kenneth Walker, $54, Ramondre Stevenson, $6,000. So some really good value on this slate to where I'm not going to force my lineups into 3K plays. But Donovan Peoples-Jones, someone that I wanted to highlight here just based off the volume he's seen, especially over the past two weeks, seen seven and nine targets, and actually is second on the team this season with a 19% target share. That's not bad at all considering the price at $3,900, but again, I just don't feel the need to spend down at this position this week. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content here on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Let's have ourselves a great weekend here, folks. Let's win some money on Sunday as well. I'm out of here.